Do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this honorable commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Mr. Nkan, what are your full names? My full names are Esien Esien Nkan. Speak up, they are recording es your voice. Please. Esien Esien Nkan. What is your address? My present address is uh, State Prison Headquarters on those states. Akure. Please hold the microphone close to your mouth. State Prison Headquarters, Akure, on those states. And what do you do for a living? I'm a public servant. Yes, what exactly, what sort of public servant? What, uh, what, what do you do now? I'm the controller of prisons in charge of Ondo State. Thank you. When were you between February and December 1995? I was the officer in charge of uh, Port Harcourt prisons. All right. When you served with a petition um, of written by Mossop? No, I have not been served. Did you receive the summons of this commission in respect of that petition? Yes. That's why you are here? That is why I'm here. Okay. And um, you have um, brought with you a representation which represents your witness, your, sorry, your testimony before this commission? Yes, I have. May I see a copy of it? May I see it, please? My Lord, I applied to put this in evidence. We also apply that the petitioner be, sorry, my Lord, the witness be allowed to read it. What exhibit is this? Sixty-seven. Exhibit sixty-seven. Mark and give him to read. I'm sorry, my lord. That's not correct. We have exhibit eighty already, so this should be eighty-one. All right. Yes, my lord. My lord, please. Have you agreed, the registrar and the council? Exhibit 8 is representation of the controller of Kogi prisons, who was in River State when the Ogoni 20 were detained. So this is Exhibit 81, my lord. Mr. Ankan, please read there your response. Mark it and let him read it. I, Esien Esien Kang, was the officer in charge of the Port Harcourt prison between February to December 1995. A very short period, but turbulent period in the history of the prison. Then I used to lock between 1,200 and 1,400 inmates daily, among, among whom were about 500 armed robbery suspects, 100 condemned convicts, political activists, coup plotters, drug barons and couriers, students involved in cult activities, and about 100 lunatics, both males and females. It is necessary to paint the above picture to enable us to visualize the whole prison as it was then. 
Legally, the main responsibilities of the prisons include the safe custody of inmates, reformation and rehabilitation after discharge. These res responsibilities are discharged to all inmates, whether they are awaiting trial, convicted or condemned. It is therefore very erroneous and mischievous for persons to suggest that the prison's department is involved in the killing of anybody. All condemned prisoners to be hanged are handed over alive to the sheriff, who is a representative of the state, after which the prison official is only a mere witness of what transpires. The Ogoni hanging. On the 9th of November 1995, at about 10 p.m., the state controller of prisons and myself were summoned before the then administrator of River State, Lieutenant Colonel Dauda Como. He handed over an execution order and a list of nine Ogonis, confirming their execution and ordered that the exercise must be concluded the next day. With the execution order, the date and time fixed, the necessary machinery for execution was put in place. 10th November, 1995. Between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. on 10th of November, 1995, the whole prison and environs and environs had been taken over by soldiers and mobile policemen. Traffic both vehicular and pedestrian, on all adjoining streets stopped and there was utter, utter silence everywhere. Some prison officials who were not within the prison were tied hands and feet and put in a store and locked. The nine Ogonis who were earlier condemned by Ogoni Civil Disturbances Tribunal on the 31st of October 1995 were one, Ken Bisun Sarowewa, two, Dr. B. N. Kubel, three, Dr. Winem, number four, Baribo Bera, number five, Saturday Dobi, number six, Nodu Rao, seven, Felix Mwate, eight, Paul Levura, and nine, David Oboku. Contrary to public opinion, only numbers five to nine persons were interned in the Podakot prison. Kensaro Wewa and three others were never in my prison and were only brought on the morning of 10th November 1995 for execution. I do not know where they were kept. At about 11.25 a.m., the four condemned convicts in our prison were brought in a black barrier amidst heavy armed escort. Mobile policemen, regular police, as well as the army, under the command of a major, provided security. The nine condemned convicts were then handed over to the sheriff, alive. Prison officials present were now mere witnesses. The execution proper commenced exactly at 12 p.m. By 1.30 p.m., the whole exercise had been concluded. Removal and burial. It is not the responsibility of the prison's department to bury executed convicts, but that of the health department of the local government authority in whose jurisdiction the execution took place. Thus, in Ogoni 9 execution, the chairman of the then caretaker committee of Potako City Council was duly informed, and he provided coffins, graves, and truck for the conveyance of the corpses. At exactly 3 p.m., the nine coffins containing the bodies of the executed convicts were conveyed to the public cemetery in Port Harcourt with armed escorts. The authorities of the Port Harcourt City Council, who are managers of the public cemetery, would provide the exact location of the burial sites. A letter addressed to the chairman of the Port Harcourt City Council is attached. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Just a couple of uh, questions for the purpose of clarification. Uh, you spoke about uh, 
the execution order, which of course set in motion the chain of events. Did you did you bring a copy of the order? Do you have a copy? No, I don't have a copy. It was never in your custody. No, it's a security document. I see. You can apply for it through the Minister of Internal Affairs. Okay. Thank you. From your testimony, all the prisoners, the condemned prisoners, were handed over to the sheriff alive by the prison officials, all working under you. All, all of them were handed over alive, all nine of them alive. Thank you very much. You also stated that, um, well, from the point when you handed over all the condemned prisoners, you became mere spectators to whatever was going on. Did you, in fact, witness the actual execution? Yes, I did. Okay. You did. Thank you. What about the burial? Were you also there when the, um, the, the prisoners were, were buried? No, but I, I witnessed them being put in, the, in, in various caskets and then carried away. Thank you. There is, a, oh, you did not uh, witness the actual burial? No, I did not. Okay, so there will be no need for my other question. Uh, Mr. Nkang, please look at page two of uh, exhibit one. The, the topmost part of it. You stated that some prison officials who were not within the prison were tied hand, hand and feet and put in a store and locked. Tied hand and feet. Uh, the military didn't want anybody moving around. And uh, most of these, my officers, were either coming to work at that time. So they were all captured and their legs were tied. I see and their hands, and they were put in the store, and they were not released till after 3 o'clock. And this exercise started around 7 a.m. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Kang, that will be all for him, my lord. Thank you. Any cross-examination? May it please the Honorable Commissioner, we have a few questions for the witness. Mr. Nkang, please can you tell this Honorable Commission the number of years of experience you have as a prison officer? About 12 years. Now, Mr. Ankang, will it be correct to suggest that you are very familiar with the procedures in the prison service? Yes, it will be very correct. Can you tell this Honorable Commission the standard procedure for execution of prisoners, condemned prisoners? No, I cannot. Why? Security. Now, Mr. Nkang, can you tell this Honorable Commission why then you revealed the procedure for the execution of the Ogoni line? Is it not covered by security? I have not revealed the procedure. I have only told you that they were executed. I have not revealed the procedure. Now, okay, maybe you are a little bit, uh, uh, you don't fully understand uh, the question. Now. What I mean, to put it in uh, ordinary parlance, is this. The standard procedure, including uh, the process from the court judgment, uh, the signing of the execution warrant, 
uh, the uh, receipt of the execution warrant by the prison, etc., and uh, all the approval procedures, uh, etc. I, I'm not necessarily, I haven't gotten to the stage of what happens in the gallows, which I will still ask you about, but, but I want you to tell the court, the commission, the normal procedure and processes that you go through before you are fully authorized to carry out an execution. Uh, please, I will not be able to go into that. Are you familiar with the Prisons Act? I'm very familiar. Now, let me put it this way. Uh, you are a witness before this commission, and you have sworn on oath to tell the truth. And you have an obligation to answer any questions that are put to you. I, I hope you are very clear about that obligation which you owe, that duty which you owe to this commission. Are you aware of that duty? Yes, I will answer any question. I, I believe it does not breach security. Say it again. You believe what? That will not breach security. That will not bring breach. national security. Uh, Milord, I would, I would insist that the witness answers the simple question that has been put to him as to the procedure for execution of condemned prisoners. I will just state that when um, a warrant, has, warrant of execution has been given and signed, uh, the normal procedure, the normal procedure starts. Now, how do you normally receive the execution order? Well, the execution order is from the court or from the tribunal. It will be addressed to the controller of prisons. Yes, and they have a, a belief? Certainly. Somebody must bring it to the controller of prisons. Yes. Thank you. That is just the the point we are trying to make. Now, it is not the normal procedure for the controller of prisons to go to the governor to collect the order, is it? It is not, but during military, military occupation, anything can happen. You can be requested to come and collect the warrant, then you have to go and collect. I, I'm, okay, I'm satisfied. You know, it's not the normal procedure. Yes. Now, do you have or can you produce a copy of the execution order? Uh, no, the, I the cannot. Warrant. Now, I suggest to you that the execution warrant was dated the 31st of October. Will I be correct? 1995? I, can, I cannot say, since I don't have a copy here. Now, talking about the uh, procedure, we'll go back to the procedure for execution. You would agree with me that in the normal procedure for execution, the entire execution process is carried out by the prison of officials who are authorized by the prison act to carry out the execution. Am I correct? You are not correct. Can you then explain to the commission what the normal procedure is? As I said earlier, the business of the prison stops when the prison authorities hand over the condemned criminals alive to the sheriff. That is all. Everybody, including the building in which the gallows is situated, is now under the authority of the sheriff. He gives instructions. Okay. Now, I mean, I'm ignorant because I, I don't work in the prisons. Uh, and we are here to find out the... the truth. When 
in the course of an execution process, you normally would have the prison officers securing the prisons. Is that correct? That's the normal procedure. I don't understand you. The prison officers secure the prisons. Is that correct? You are correct. Exactly. Now, was it normal procedure from your many years of experience as a prison officer for the prison officers who are supposed to secure the prison to be tied arms and legs and put in a store whilst an execution process is going on? Is that normal procedure? Well, it's not normal. Thank you. I told you under military occupation, anything can happen. Yes. I, 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 I sympathize with you, really. You know, I'm sorry about that. That's why we're here. Now, it, so in many ways, Mr. Nkang, it will be correct to suggest to you that in view of the fact that you have been excluded from the execution process, you would not be in a position to know what happened. Would that be correct? I don't understand you. I will take it again. From the stories that you told, one, you were invited to the governor's office and handed over an execution process. Two, you didn't keep some of the convicts that were to be executed purportedly by you. Three, your officers were gagged and dumped in a store. That from all these facts, which you yourself gave evidence on, that it would be correct to suggest that you do not know much about the execution process. Am I right? I did not say that some of my, I mean, I said some of my officers, not all, some, some of them, not all. And I was not the only person that went to the governor's office. I said my controller and myself. I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, okay. I, agree with, I agree with you completely on that. All I'm just saying is that the prison as an authority yes. had been uh, sort of uh, uh, pushed aside or hijacked by this force of uh, armed mobile policemen, armed soldiers, etc. And consequently, the prisons was not aware of the execution process. Is that correct? Well, the prison was aware of the execution process. Yes, what I mean is you can't really say much about what happened. That's what I'm talking about. Why? We can't say. Okay. So you, you, you can strongly say what happened. Mm -hmm. Can you strongly say what happened? Ask your question. If I can say, I will answer. Okay, good. So. Can you say who the major was that took over the prisons? No, if you, if you go into the records, you'll find out who the major is. I am not the record. You are the record. So tell the commission. Who was the, the major? The major was the commander of the internal task force. Of what security. is his name? No, I, I don't know his name. Can that be Obi Umahe? Well, maybe. I don't keep the records. Yes. Again? But I've told you he was the commander of the internal task force. Yes. Yes. Now, again, if we want to um, agree with you, immediately the sheriff took over, immediately the uh, uh, live bodies, as it were, were handed over to the sheriff. You wouldn't know what happened from then on. Why? Well, I say we are witnesses. You were witnesses. We are witnesses, the no, prison no. officers. You are, you are here to give evidence for yourself. Were you a witness? I was a witness. I was a witness. Were a witness. Were I witnesses. Was, I and my colleagues were witnesses. To what happened? Yes. So you were not tied up? Uh, uh, why? I said that the people that were tied maybe were the officers that came late okay. to work. And the military didn't want people moving around the area. Okay. Now, I suggest to you that the diseased convicts were not executed in accordance 
with the provisions of the law. In other words, they were not executed by a process of hanging. But how? Tell the commission. I suggest to you that they were not executed by that process. I don't understand your question. How were they executed? You said you were there. The warrant said hanging. They were hanged. In my statement, I said that the people were hanged. Okay. After the hanging, what happened? You were there. After the hanging, the next thing is burial. Now, I suggest to you that after the hanging, they wanted these soldiers that took over the prisons, wanted to make sure that those people were dead, and they poured acid on them, their corpses. It's not correct. It's not correct? Yes. What happened? After the hanging, the doctors certified them dead. There is a coroner's report. I said earlier, if you want the details, you apply to the Minister of Internal Affairs and you have them. Okay. The coroner's report is there. All the reports are there. They were now put in various caskets. Yes. Various caskets and then taken to the Port Harcourt Cemetery and buried. Okay. Now, so I don't know where the acid was poured on them, according to you. Oh, okay. So you are sure that the acid wasn't poured within the uh, prison premises? I'm not, I don't know anything about acid. Okay. I said that they were put in various caskets, nine. Yes. And, and sealed and carried in a lorry and taken to the cemetery. That okay. is all. Good. Now, immediately the corpses left the prison, you don't know what happened to them, do you? Well, I can say so. You can say. Now, do you know that acid was poured on those corpses before they were buried? I cannot say so. Good. In fact, you are not in a position to say so. I because you were not there so. when they were buried. I cannot say so. Yes. Now, do you know the chairman of the local government to whom you handed over the corpses? No, I don't know the chairman of the local government. The letter is addressed to the chairman of the local government to provide coffins, burial sites, and transport to convey the corpses for burial. So there was no point for me to know the, the chairman personally. May it please the Honorable Commission, uh, I humbly, regrettably, uh, would be applying uh, to summon the uh, chairman of the local government. That is the only problem that I have. Because the issue of uh, the, the uh, uh, point of acid, uh, uh, which went on with the barrier, uh, before the barrier, uh, it's, it's a problem that we have. And he on what issue are you calling the chairman? On the barrier, for two issues, sir. The first one is that uh, in any event, we have a problem of uh, knowing the site of the barrier so that uh, we can, uh, uh, as part of our request, that they can be given proper barrier. Yes. Uh, so we need to know the site. And we thought we would have gotten it from uh, the prisons. But when he came today and said uh, they yes, just handed it over, uh, I have a problem, sir. Well, my lord, uh, I, we object to that application for the reason that this case must have to come to an end someday, my lord. We have been at this since January. Without this his applying, you should have even done that without his applying. Well, my lord, because I post, I post. hold it, hold it. It's an issue arising from our discussion yesterday that they want to know where the Ogoni nine were buried. The man who can give us evidence on that is the man to whom he said he handed over. One of the things that will soothe the jarred nerves of the community is to return the corpses for reburial. And he said, yeah, you object. Objection to what? Well, we have meant to deal with that through other administrative means, but if my lord directs that we summon the chairman, of course we will. Sorry, I, I, 
actually just wanted to know from you uh, because I think you can figure out things that you will get answers from officially from people like him. The chairman of the local government is not likely to tell you whether there was acid poured on the body. Maybe forensic analysis might prove that. I would, my position would have been that, first of all, we know and we hope that the piece of land where these people were buried has not moved away. If, if you secure the right to access, then the issue of where the local government chairman is becomes immaterial. Because it might, you could end up, for example, on the day that they took the bodies for burial, the chairman might say he was not, he was not there. And you're going to go round and round inside. I think what we should be looking for is the right, the right of entry to the place. And you probably don't need a local government chairman to give you that right because he won't. So I thought we could close the case but still progress on that path as part of uh, what, you know, what the chairman has just, has just mentioned. Yes, ma'am. I mean, it doesn't. What I'm saying, in effect, is the issue of summoning the, the the chairman of the local government council is possible as part of our ongoing discussion. He doesn't have to come here to 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 give uh, evidence. I I would I would uh, concede that our, our major uh, desire is to have access. That is our major desire. I will concede uh, the. But I, I just, I just uh, uh, hope that without the exercise of the coercive uh, powers of the commission, that we would uh, succeed. And, and that is where I have a fear, and why I would have preferred that uh, there be someone to come here. Uh, have you got a bit eight, 81? Have you got it there? Yes, ma'am. Look at the letter. Yes. I have read it, sir. Read it. Um, from the prison service to the chairman, Port Harcourt City Council, Moscow Road, Port Harcourt. Execution order request for coffins and burial. I wish to inform you that the execution orders have been received from the office of the military administrator of the River State for the execution of nine condemned convicts on 10th November 1995. Two. You are therefore requested to provide coffins and arrange transport for the removal and burial of the nine uh, corpses at the government cemetery. Three, grateful treat as very urgent, please. Signed, E. E. Nkang. From yes, this no. letter, yes, the only obligation is to provide coffins and arrange for the removal and burial of the bodies. Yes, my lord. Need he be present at the burial? The chairman. Need he know where they were buried? Well, my lord, uh, uh, that would be... Uh, From this um, letter? Yes, sir. There's lord. no obligation on him. Duty is to provide yes, coffins. Lord. Yes, my lord. Arrange transport. Well, my lord, if that would... My lord, with respect, sir, be a narrow interpretation of this letter. In other words, what I'm saying is yes. this. Since we're all interested, yes, my lord. You do more work on where these people were buried. Yes, my lord. You call this man and he says, "I don't know where they are buried." Yes, we're still lord. square one. Where all of us are interested to know where they where were buried. Where they are, yes, my lord. This man may or may not know. Yes, my lord. And the, the problem that I I have, sir, is that if we don't use the coercive uh, powers of this commission, we would then be in a rigmarole. Who uh, do we call to give us an exact... Mi Lord, the, not from this a, man. No, Mi Lord, yes, from, you can you help us? From a broad interpretation of this document, if he says they us. will arrange burial. And if I understand burial, burial means to put the person to ground. And, and if, I, if I interpret this document from a broad uh, uh, perspective, I will read the conclusion that from this letter, the, it was expected that the uh, chairman would arrange the burial. He says, you are therefore requested to provide coffins and arrange transport, transport for removal and burial. Transport. Yes, my lord. For removal. Yes, my lord. Transport. Yes, my lord. It depends if the word and is interpreted disjunctively. Yes, my lord. It will mean burial. Yes, my lord. Can I help you? Yes. Rather, rather unofficially. 
is that we have an idea yes. about somebody who people who kept watch over the site they can be found so it's not just the coercive powers of the commission we can use other means so if we just leave it at that okay. and close this case we'll follow it by other means we will, we will accept the assurance of this commission that the matter will be followed yes. we will accept that assurance uh, the application is partly on you too yes my lord yes. Yes. not on the commission alone it's on you too if you give us the name of the person who knows where they were buried we summon him Yes, Milo, the problem uh, from our team is that uh, the access is there. We know where the cemetery is, but it is unmarked. We don't know which is the particular, and somebody has to do that, it, and it has to be Will somebody the from the department. Do that for us? Milo, the chairman has a department that is in charge, the public health department, under him. They did the job. And it is they can point out the particular graves, and that is where the problem is. Milo, at this stage, at this stage, if I may accede to my learned friend to provide more information to the commission. Sorry, I think we are jumping the gun here. These people are still. I assume that. At least under the land use decree, cemeteries are owned by government too. Yes. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is that we don't even have right of access yet until, even if we knew the places. If you don't have government permission to go and excavate the, uh, and take out the body, you can't enter the place. Yes. Our conversation yesterday included government of River State. Yes, it did. And uh, as the president said here when he came about. Uh, uh, Beko Kuti's uh, property. You go to Lagos State Government, they took over the property. At the end of the day, they will send you back to uh, River State Government. River State Government will then ask the local government chairman to lead your people to the place. So unless we secure that approval, there's very little to go by. Even if we know the place, we can't enter the place because it's, it's government property. Yes. And I think that's why I said if we close the, 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 the discussion at this point and continue with, with it as part of uh, September 26 meeting, okay. I think that will then be, 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 be roped into it because I don't think that this is something that no public officer is going to come here and uh, you know tell you all these stories when he knows the consequences as far as their jobs are concerned. I think okay. that is... I, we, concede, we concede, we concede, my lord, and I just want to say, sir, that uh, in the course of the follow-up, that we expect that uh, the commission should be able to reach some of the people whom we believe will be able to identify the particular graves. We will supply the information, sir. Thank you, my lord. That will be all for this uh, weakness. Part of the commitment we read about from the River State Government is here help you locate where the nine were buried. Yes. And you can do that quietly. Yes, my lord. Uh -huh. We will make our own inquiries. Then if you have any difficulty, then you can apply to the commission. Then we'll write a letter to the governor. Yes, you see? We are very much obliged. So calling this witness, although on paper he appears as a necessary witness, but what will he say? Nothing. They were buried in a burial ground. Finish. Yes. What, what we need is to see the, where they are actually buried. That because the letter is just to provide coffins and arrange for removal. We are very much obliged. I have, have you finished? Because I want to ask him a few questions. Uh, you, Mr. Nkang. You, the first paragraph of your, of your submission is yes, quite elaborate, the category of people you had. And you have a hundred lunatics. You have a hundred lunatics. And I just needed to know whether these 100 lunatics are graduates from um, the, this degree of convicts, you know, drug barons, 
suspected armed robberies. I mean, do people graduate from being normal citizens to being lunatics, or are lunatics given to you in custody as prisoners? Because you have, on, on, as I said, on the first paragraph here, you said you have a hundred lunatics. About that, um, Port Harcourt uh, prison is a very large prison, and um, it's just like a city. So in a city, you can have normal people and abnormal people. No, in city, people are free to leave. The people go home and come back. You don't yes, go just home as and come we have, prison. I'm just, just saying... we have mad people in cities. We also no, have I'm, no, 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 no. You're not answering my question. Focus I said, on. were they, did they come to you as lunatics? In which case, you took them in as lunatics. Or did they become lunatics? Did normal human beings become lunatics in prison? While that's that's in what prison. I'm asking. No, they don't become lunatics while in prison. We have asylum inside the prison. And if you have uh, some mad relations and things like that, and you, d you don't want to keep them around you, either you take them to the mental hospital where they are treated, or you pass through the court and send them to the prison asylum, where we have doctors to, to try and see what they can do about them. OK. You also made the point that um, prisoners who are, I mean, people who are condemned you hand them over alive. Um, does it say anything about their physical condition? I mean, if somebody is condemned to death and you, the person is brought to you and you see, for example, that they are physically unwell, will it affect their fate? Uh, yes, it depends on the type of sickness, especially mental cases. No, if, uh, if somebody is is identified as a, a mental case, I don't think he, he is hanged. He will not be hanged until he has, he has been certified to be well before any, any hanging takes place. In your final, just as a matter of curiosity, I mean, on the, if I may ask, I don't know if you remember, but when did you come, when did you arrive to your office on the 10th of November? What time? Would you remember? On the 10th of November, I, I don't even think I slept from the night. No, no, no. I mean, when did you arrive at your desk? As early as 6 a.m. I was on my desk on the 10th. Because I find it a bit curious that between, um, by 12, the executions had commenced. And that uh, you wrote your letter on the 10th. Yes. And the people were executed on the 10th. Yes, sir. And the coffins were made on the 10th. Yes. As early as 6 a.m. on the 10th, I was in the office. And the whole process started on the 10th. Even the sheriff, the coroner, all of them were contacted before 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. Well, I think on a final note, actually, what was said about hanging here and the method of killing raises other questions, which are questions that are being asked all over the world as to whether we should continue to hang people. And I think after the Truth Commission in South Africa, South Africa no longer hangs people. And I'm hoping that, uh, apart from just asking that people be hanged generously, we should be campaigning for the, an end to, to the death penalty. Because this has become a very important part of our discussion. And I hope that uh, it can continue well beyond the commission. Yes, well, I agree completely with the Honorable Member of the Commission. In fact, uh, I should Can mention you, at this stage Which one is generous hanging? Below, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have submitted a written address. Uh, oh, you've already done this? Yes, so. and uh, uh, we dealt uh, extensively. Yes, my Lord. And are we moving too fast? You wanted a witness. Counsel for the commission objected. Yes, ma'am. I intervened that witness looks like a relevant witness. Yes, ma'am. Then I ask you to read uh, the attachment to exhibit 81. Yes, ma'am. After reading it, we discovered that he was not so relevant. Are you not agreeing with her that you close your case? Well, that we close the case now. The 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 point sir, is that uh, the the case is consolidated. And uh, with respect to one part of the case, uh -huh. the Honorable Commission had already ordered that we should submit a written address. 
and pursuant to that order we I'm have talking about the case of the Ogoni 9 yes my lord that case is closed now well my lord if I may try to distinguish because there's the Mossop case there's the uh, uh, Mr. Mitty's case and then there's the Kensal Rewa case which is really the Ogoni 9 case what about it well, so, so we take it the two cases are closed well, my lord, yes, we, All right. we, we, would, we, we think that we will get more from the investigative power of the commission rather, for, rather than from this uh, oral testimony. Public hearing closed. Yes, my lord. Right. Yes, my lord. My lord, uh, uh, we are urging the, the counsel to the commission to ensure that uh, at the next meeting uh, let's the finish the, po the hearing we'll as, deal with the meeting later on as your worship on question about dress I don't know what issues you highlighted but I like the two parties all the parties to highlight certain issues One dealing with the human rights of Ogoni people in general. Now we had the evidence of uh, Kutimo, we had the evidence of Dauda Como. They gave a completely different picture that there was tribal inter um, town conflict or Kreka, this one and that one, that's where the killings, not by the security forces. Issue number one. If you discharge your obligation on that issue, the next issue, how far did the oil company contribute to the human rights violations? Two, what you allege were the excesses of the army and the police. Three, how far did the government, federal government, share in the responsibility of what the oil company instigated, according to you, and what Dada Como and his lieutenant executed. Then you address fourthly the issue of environmental pollution. Fourthly or fifthly then issue of the prison condition in Port Harcourt prison. We visited it and there's nothing to write home about at all. A prison built by the colonialists in 1890, 1890 something. When was the prison built? Uh, I cannot recall. And you were there. <laughs> it's very old. It's not a question of recall. If you are interested in the history of the institution where you are, and you told us in your uh, exhibit 81, 1,500. 1929. Mm -hmm. 1,500 inmates in a cell built for about 20 people. Not a cell, sir. So all this we want to know in order to make recommendation about prison reform, which is now overdue. Also, whether mere entry into those prisons don't amount to torture, legally defined, because the impression is that torture is when you start beating me up. You have physical torture, you have mental torture. So I'd like to be, this point to be emphasized so that it will help us arrive at what type of recommendations we're able to make. We are very much obliged. As I was saying earlier, uh, my lord, that uh, with respect to the petition 746, 
we have already um, filed a written address. And uh, one of the issues that we looked at uh, was the International uh, Covenant on uh, Civil and Pol Political Rights. And, uh, which lay the, uh, and that covenant is divided into two. They have the abolitionist uh, states and the retentionist states. That is, those states that have decided to abolish uh, capital punishment and those that have decided to retain it. Now, Nigeria signed as a retentionist state. But the, uh, the covenant now laid minimum requirements for imposition of uh, capital punishment. And right. we have dealt extensively with that to show that the law under which the Ogoni Nine were tried did not meet the minimum standard laid by uh, uh, the Covenant, the International Covenant. We dealt extensively with uh, all that. And uh, I think, and I agree with uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Commissioner to the extreme left, that it is time Nigeria graduates from being a retentionist state to an abolitionist state. Uh, you say you've uh, already filed your yeah, file address? It, yes, yes, my lord. That's that correct? Program. I can confirm that, my lord. Uh, they have? Good. Yes, my lord. Otherwise, I'll still make the order that addresses should be filed within two weeks. Yes, my lord. We will still need to file address to cover the issues raised All right. uh, today. This is without prejudice to the other meeting yes. for settlement. Yes, my lord. It's ongoing. That is ongoing. Yes, my lord. But the public hearing is ended, except that you still help us to find out where they were buried. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are very much obliged. <laughs>